Chris Kellner from Mount Sinai. I'm an assistant professor here in neurosurgery, and I'm director of the intracerebral hemorrhage program. Today I'm going to be talking about our first case uh, implanting the Euroflow catheter in a patient with spontaneous intraventricular hemorrhage. This patient is a 93-year-old gentleman, uh, a little bit on the elderly side, however, completely independent at baseline. He was found down by his family at home and he was brought into Mount Sinai, Brooklyn, where a CT showed a spontaneous intraventricular hemorrhage. He was unresponsive at the time, he required intubation, and uh, as you can see on this CT, he had a left casted ventricle and a significant amount of blood in the right ventricle. He was transferred emergently to Mount Sinai West, um, where we have our intracerebral hemorrhage center and where we were able to place the Euroflow catheter. We did this at the bedside. We used a left frontal approach uh, to be able to place the catheter in the bulk of the hematoma. The Euroflow upon placement provided ICP monitoring in conjunction with active fluid exchange to evacuate blood from the ventricular system. Initially, we used a lactated ringer solution as the irrigating solution. After 15 hours uh, of irrigation, we repeated the CT um, and, uh, and then saw that there had been no additional bleeding. So we added TPA to the irrigation, at which time we had two milligrams of TPA in one liter of lactated ringers uh, with the automated irrigation system. And just so you, the function of the Euroflow system, it's a dynamic solution for advanced fluid management in intracranial space that enables therapeutic treatment for intracranial bleeding. It has automated forward irrigation. It has controlled drainage based on settings that you can uh, set at the bedside. And it has uh, active ICP monitoring, continuous ICP monitoring. The initial CT is on the left here uh, after placement of the Euroflow. And then you can see um, after let's, let, just less than 24 hours with Euroflow, we repeated the CT there and you can see that there was a little bit of removal of blood, but not a significant removal of blood at that point. That's when we added TPA to the irrigation fluid. Again, we had two milligrams in one liter, so uh, a fairly low dose. Um, and then after 22 hours with TPA in the irrigation, um, you can see that CAT scan, that third one, it had nearly cleared out all of the blood. There was a little bit of blood left in the occipital horn. Uh, and then we continued the irrigation with TPA for another 24 hours, and at that point, we pretty much had all the blood out. And that's that far right image. So to give you a sense of how this patient did, the patient was found unresponsive, got a CT that confirmed IVH. The patient was transferred to Mount Sinai West, where left frontal Euroflow was placed. One hour post-op, uh, we were waking the patient up from the little bit of sedation they had gotten, um, and the patient was able to move their upper extremities. Um, the next day, 11 hours after placement and drainage, the patient was following commands. Uh, 15 hours after placement, uh, the patient had been extubated and was alert and oriented times three. And then passed a speech and swallow test. Uh, and you can see within 24 hours after placement, uh, the patient was eating a dinner, um, which we, we found to be pretty motivating. 22 hours after placement, that's when we added TPA. Uh, and then uh, two days after placement, the patient was up and out of bed and eating breakfast. Uh, at, a, at a chair in the room. Uh, and then three days post-op, we had that CAT scan that looked very good. The patient was transferred out of the ICU. The airflow was removed. Um, the patient passed a clamp trial. And, uh, and after 24 hours, less than a day on the regular floor, the patient was transferred to uh, acute rehab. So just to summarize, uh, this is a case of a 93-year-old who was found down in his home 
uh, and found to have a significant spontaneous intraventricular hemorrhage. He was transferred to our central hospital where uh, he had placement of a left frontal ear of flow. After 24 hours of drainage, we repeated the CAT scan, saw that there had been no additional bleeding and it looked safe to give TPA, so we began including TPA in the irrigation fluid. And then after three days uh, of irrigation fluid, we had the ventricles pretty much completely uh, irrigated there and, uh, and the patient was doing very well. We were able to remove the catheter uh, and the patient was able to go to rehab one day after that. The patient's family was ecstatic about this uh, outcome and they even requested and considered having him featured in a, a news station or a news article. Um, it, it is, I think, some of the advantages of this technique over regular EVD. Uh, this unique mechanism of action, having irrigation going antegrade in the catheter, and then also having retrograde uh, fluid flow, keeps the catheter free from any occlusions. So in our case and in published data, there are zero catheter occlusions using Euroflow compared to documented 47% EVD occlusion rate. Uh, in this case, there were zero major complications, no bleeding, uh, no infection, uh, no issues uh, whatsoever. And um, for a patient with a casted ventricle and a significant amount of blood in the other ventricle who was elderly, we only had the catheter in for 86 hours with 67 hours of active fluid exchange, 46 hours of continuous TPA, and then 19 hours of monitoring before removing the catheter on, and the patient did very well with that protocol. Thank you very much for listening.